The Days Gone By by James Whitcomb Riley from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao. The Days Gone By Oh, the days gone by, oh, the days gone by, the apples in the orchard and the pathway through the rye, the chirrup of the robin and the whistle of the quail, as he piped across the meadows sweet as any nightingale. When the bloom was on the clover, and the blue was in the sky, And my happy heart brimmed over in the days gone by. In the days gone by, when my naked feet were tripped, By the honeysuckle tangles where the water lilies dipped, And the ripples of the river lipped the moss along the brink, Where the placid-eyed and lazy-footed cattle came to drink, And the tilting snipe stood fearless o'er the truant's wayward cry, And the splashing of the swimmer in the days gone by. Oh, the days gone by, oh, the days gone by, The music of the laughing lip, the luster of the eye, The childish faith in fairies, and Aladdin's magic ring, The simple soul-reposing, glad belief in everything. When life was like a story, holding neither sob nor sigh, In the golden, olden glory of the days gone by. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Seven Times Two, Romance, by Jean Ingelow, from The World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Seven Times Two, Romance. You bells in the steeple, ring out your changes, how many soever they be, and let the brown meadow lark's note as he ranges come over come over to me yet birds clearest carol by fall or by swelling no magical sense conveys and bells have forgotten their old art of telling the fortune of future days turn again turn again once they rang cheerily while a boy listened alone made his heart yearn again musing so wearily all by himself on a stone poor bells i forgive you your good days are over and mine they are yet to be no listening no longing shall aught aught discover you leave the story to me the foxglove shoots out of the green matted heather preparing her hoods of snow she was idle and slept till the sunshiny weather o oh, children take long to grow I wish and I wish that the spring would go faster, nor long summer bide so late, and I could grow on like the foxglove and aster, for some things are ill to wait. I wait for the day when dear hearts shall discover, while dear hands are laid on my head. The child is a woman, the book may close over, for all the lessons are said. I wait for my story. The birds cannot sing it, not one, as he sits on the tree. The bells cannot ring it, but long years, oh, bring it, such as I wish it to be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Farewell by Charles Kingsley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama A Farewell My fairest child, I have no song to give you. No lark could pipe to skies so dull and gray. Yet, ere we part, one lesson I can leave you for every day. Be good, sweet maid. And let who will be clever do noble things, not dream them all day long. And so make life, death, and that vast forever one grand sweet song. Charles Kingsley End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Riding Down by Nora Perry From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read 
for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Riding Down Oh, did you see him riding down, and riding down where all the town came out to see, came out to see, and all the bells rang mad with glee? Oh, did you hear those bells ring out, the bells ring out, the people shout, and did you hear that cheer on cheer that over all the bells rang clear? And did you see the waving flags, the fluttering flags, the tattered flags, red, white, and blue, shot through and through, baptized with battle's deadly dew? And did you hear the drums gay beat, the drums gay beat, the bugle sweet, the cymbals clash, the cannons crash, that rent the sky with sound and flash? And did you see me waiting there, just waiting there and watching there, one little lass amid the mass, that pressed to see the hero pass, and did you see him smiling down and smiling down as riding down, with slowest pace, with stately grace, he caught the vision of a face. My face, uplifted red and white, turned red and white with sheer delight, to meet the eyes, the smiling eyes, out flashing in their swift surprise. Oh, did you see how swift it came, how swift it came like sudden flame, that smile to me, to only me, the little lass who blushed to see. And at the windows all along, oh, all along, a lovely throng, of faces fair beyond compare, beamed out upon him riding there. Each face was like a radiant gem, a sparkling gem, and yet, for them, no swift smile came like sudden flame, no arrowy glance took certain aim. He turned away from all their grace, from all that grace of perfect face. He turned to me, to only me, the little lass who blushed to see. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Girl of Pompeii by Edward Sanford Martin From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao A Girl of Pompeii A public haunt they found her in. She lay asleep, a lovely child, the only thing left undefiled, where all things else bore taint of sin. Her charming contours fixed in clay, the universal law suspend, and turn time's chariot back and blend a thousand years with yesterday. A sinless touch, austere yet warm, around her girlish figure pressed, caught the sweet imprint of her breast, and held her surely clasped from harm. Truer than work of sculptor's art comes this dear maid of long ago, sheltered from woeful chance to show a spirit's lovely counterpart. And bid mistrustful men be sure that form shall fate of flesh escape, and quit of earth's corruption shape itself imperishably pure. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Season by Robert Louis Stevenson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia In the Season It is the season now to go About the country, high and low, Among the lilacs, hand in hand, And two by two in fairyland. The brooding boy, the sighing maid, Wholly fain and half afraid, now meet along the hazel brook to pass and linger, pause and look. A year ago, and blithely paired, their rough and tumble play they shared. They kissed and quarrelled, laughed and cried, a year ago at Easter tide. With bursting heart, with fiery face, she strove against him in the race. He unabashed her garter saw that now would touch her skirts with awe now by the stile ablaze she stops and his demurer eyes he drops now they exchange averted sighs or stand and merry silent eyes and he to her a hero is and sweeter she than primroses their common silence dearer far than nightingale and mavis are now when they sever wedded hands, joy trembles in their bosom strands, and lovely laughter leaps and falls upon their lips 
in madrigals end of poem this recording is in the public domain sweet stream that winds by william cowper from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by jason in panama sweet stream that winds sweet stream that winds through yonder glade apt emblem of a virtuous maid silent and chaste she steals along far from the world's gay busy throng with gentle yet prevailing force intent upon her destined course graceful and useful all she does blessing and best where'er she goes pure bosomed as that watery glass and heaven reflected in her face william cowper end of poem this recording is in the public domain to my grandmother suggested by a picture by mr romney by frederick locker lampson from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by craig franklin to my grandmother this relative of mine was she seventy and nine when she died by the canvas may be seen how she looked at seventeen as a bride beneath the summer tree her maiden reverie has a charm her ringlets are in taste what an arm what a waist for an arm with her bridal wreath bouquet lace farthingale and gay falbala were romney's limning true what a lucky dog were you grandpapa her lips are sweet as love they are parting do they move are they dumb her eyes are blue and beam beseechingly and seem to say come what funny fancy slips from atween these cherry lips whisper me sweet sorceress in paint what canon says i mayn't marry thee that good-for-nothing time has a confidence sublime when i first saw this lady in my youth her winters had forsooth done their worst her locks as white as snow once shamed the swarthy crow by and by that foul's avenging sprite set his cruel foot for spite near her eye her rounded form was lean and her silk was bombazine well i wot with her needles would she sit and for hours would she knit would she not ah perishable clay her charms had dropped away one by one but if she heaved a sigh with a burden it was thy will be done in travail as in tears with the fardel of her years overpast in mercy she was born where the weary and the worn are at rest oh if you now are there and sweet as once you were grandmamma this nether world agrees twill all the better please grandpapa end of poem this recording is in the public domain the schoolgirl by william henry venable from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by jason in panama the schoolgirl from home sweet home the morning train brings to the city five days a week in sun or rain returning like a song's refrain a schoolgirl pretty a wild flower's unaffected grace is dainty misses yet in her shy expressive face the touch of urban arts i trace and artifices no one but she and heaven knows of what she's thinking it may be either books or bow fine scholarship or stylish clothes per sense or prinking how happy must the household be this morn who kissed her 
not every one can make so free who sees her inly wishes she were his own sister how favored is the book she cons the slate she uses the hat she lightly doffs and dons the orient sunshade that she owns the desk she chooses is she familiar with the wars of julius caesar do crucibles and laden jars and browning and the moons of mars and euclid please her she studies music i opine o oh, day of knowledge and other mysteries divine of imitation or design taught in the college a charm attends her everywhere a sense of beauty care smiles to see her free of care the hard heart loves her unaware age pays her duty her innocence is panoply her weakness power the earth her guardian and the sky god's every star is her ally and every flower william henry venable end of poem this recording is in the public domain maidenhood by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox org by thomas peter maidenhood maiden with the meek brown eyes in whose orbs a shadow lies like the dusk in evening skies and thou whose locks outshine the sun golden tresses wreathed in one as the braided streamlets run standing with reluctant feet where the brook and river meet womanhood and childhood fleet gazing with a timid glance on the brooklet's swift advance on the river's broad expanse deep and still that gliding stream beautiful to thee must seem as the river of a dream then why pause with indecision when bright angels in thy vision beckon thee to fields elysian seest thou shadows sailing by as the dove with startled eye sees the falcon's shadow fly hearst thou voices on the shore that our ears perceive no more deafened by the cataract's roar o thou child of many prayers life hath quicksands life hath snares care and age come unawares like the swell of some sweet tune morning rises into noon may glides onward into june childhood is the bough where slumbered birds and blossoms many numbered age that bough with snows encumbered gather then each flower that grows when the young heart overflows to embalm that tent of snows bear a lily in thy hand gates of brass cannot withstand one touch of that magic wand bear through sorrow wrong and ruth in thy heart the dew of youth on thy lips the smile of truth oh that dew like balm shall steal into wounds that cannot heal even as sleep our eyes doth seal and that smile like sunshine dart into many a sunless heart for a smile of god thou art end of poem this recording is in the public domain To a Highland Girl at Inversnaid upon Loch Lomond by William Wordsworth. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. To a Highland Girl. Sweet Highland Girl, a very shower of beauty is thy earthly dower. Twice seven consenting years have shed their utmost bounty on thy head. And these grey rocks, this household lawn, these trees, a veil just half withdrawn, this fall of water that doth make 
a murmur near the silent lake this little bay a quiet road that holds in shelter thy abode in truth together ye do seem like something fashioned in a dream such forms as from their covert peep when earthly cares are laid asleep but o oh, fair creature in the light of common day so heavenly bright i bless thee vision as thou art i bless thee with a human heart god shield thee to thy latest years i neither know thee nor thy peers and yet my eyes are filled with tears with earnest feeling i shall pray for thee when i am far away for never saw i mine or face in which more plainly i could trace benignity and home-bred sense ripening in perfect innocence here scattered like a random seed remote from men thou dost not need the embarrassed look of shy distress and maidenly shamefacedness thou wearest upon thy forehead clear the freedom of a mountaineer a face with gladness overspread soft smiles by human kindness bred and seemliness complete that sways thy courtesies about thee plays with no restraint but such as springs from quick and eager visitings of thoughts that lie beyond the reach of thy few words of english speech a bondage sweetly brooked a strife that gives the gestures grace and life so have i not unmoved in mind seen birds of tempest loving kind thus beating up against the wind what hand but would a garland cull for thee who art so beautiful o happy pleasure here to dwell beside thee in some heathy dell adopt your homely ways and dress a shepherd thou a shepherdess but i could frame a wish for thee more like a grave reality thou art to me but as a wave of the wild sea and i would have some claim upon thee if i could though but of common neighbourhood what joy to hear thee and to see thy elder brother i would be thy father anything to thee now thanks to heaven that of its grace hath led me to this lonely place joy have i had and going hence i bear away my recompense in spots like these it is we prize our memory feel that she hath eyes then why should i be loath to stir i feel this place was made for her to give new pleasure like the past continued long as life shall last nor am i loath though pleased at heart sweet highland girl from thee to part for i methinks till i grow old as fair before me shall behold as i do now the cabin small the lake the bay the waterfall and thee the spirit of them all end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ruth by Thomas Hood From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao Ruth She stood breast high amid the corn, Clasped by the golden light of morn, Like the sweetheart of the sun, Who many a glowing kiss had won. On her cheek an autumn flush, Deeply ripened, such a blush, In the midst of brown was born, like red poppies grown with corn. Round her eyes her tresses fell, which were blackest none could tell, but long lashes veiled a light that had else been all too bright, and a hat with shady brim made her tressy forehead dim. Thus she stood amid the stooks, praising God with sweetest looks. Sure, I said, heaven did not mean, where I reap thou shouldst but glean. Lay thy sheafer down and come, Share my harvest and my home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pretty Girl of Loch Dan by Samuel Ferguson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 
Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as the narrator. Jason in Panama as the comrade. And Lian Yao as Maori. The Pretty Girl of Lokdan. The shades of eve had crossed the glen that frowns o'er infant Avonmore, when nigh Lokdan, two weary men, we stopped before a cottage door. God save all here, my comrade cries, and rattles on the raised latch pin. God save you kindly, quick replies a clear sweet voice and asks us in. We enter, from the wheel she starts, a rosy girl with soft black eyes. Her fluttering courtesy takes our hearts, her blushing grace and pleased surprise. Poor Mary, she was quite alone. For all the way to Glenmalure, her mother had that morning gone, and left the house in charge with her. But neither household cares, nor yet the shame that startled virgins feel, could make the generous girl forget her wanted hospitable zeal. She brought us in a beechen bowl, sweet milk that smacked of mountain thyme, oat cake, and such a yellow roll of butter, it gilds all my rhyme. And while we ate the grateful food, with weary limbs on bench reclined, considerate and discreet, she stood apart and listened to the wind. Kind wishes both our souls engaged, from breast to breast spontaneous ran the mutual thought. We stood and pledged the modest rose above Lockdown. The milk we drink is not more pure, sweet Mary, bless those budding charms, than your own generous heart, I'm sure, nor whiter than the breast it warms. She turned and gazed, unused to hear such language in that homely glen. But, Mary, you have not to fear, though smiled on by two stranger men. Not for a crown would I alarm your virgin pride by word or sign, nor need a painful blush disarm my friend of thoughts as pure as mine. Her simple heart could not but feel the words we spoke were free from guile. She stooped, she blushed, she fixed her wheel. Tis all in vain, she can't but smile. Just like sweet April's dawn appears her modest face, I see it yet. And though I lived a hundred years, methinks I never could forget the pleasure that, despite her heart, fills all her downcast eyes with light the lips reluctantly apart, the white teeth struggling into sight, the dimples eddying o'er her cheek, the rosy cheek that won't be still. Oh, who could blame what flatterers speak? Did smiles like this reward their skill? For such another smile, I vow, though loudly beats the midnight rain, I take the mountainside e'en now, and walk to Legolaw again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ben Bolt by Thomas Dunn English From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Ben Bolt Don't you remember sweet Alice Ben Bolt? Sweet Alice, whose hair was so brown, who wept with delight when you gave her a smile, and trembled with fear at your frown. In the old churchyard in the valley, Ben Bolt, in a corner obscure and alone, they have fitted a slab of the granite so grey, and Alice lies under the stone. Under the hickory tree, Ben Bolt, which stood at the foot of the hill, Together we've lain in the noonday shade, and listened to Appleton's mill. The mill wheel has fallen to pieces, Ben Bolt. The rafters have tumbled in, and a quiet which crawls round the walls as you gaze has followed the olden din. Do you mind of the cabin of logs, Ben Bolt, at the edge of the pathless wood, and the button ball tree with its motley limbs which nigh by the doorstep stood? The cabin to ruin has gone, Ben Bolt, the tree you would seek for in vain, and where once the lords of the forest waved are grass and the golden grain. 
and don't you remember the school ben bolt with the master so cruel and grim and the shaded nook in the running brook where the children went to swim grass grows on the master's grave ben bolt the spring of the brook is dry and of all the boys who were schoolmates then there are only you and i there is change in the things i loved ben bolt they have changed from the old to the new but i feel in the deeps of my spirit the truth there never was change in you twelve months twenty have passed ben bolt since first we were friends yet i hail your presence a blessing your friendship a truth ben bolt of the salt sea gale end of poem this recording is in the public domain Honey, Dripping from the Comb by James Whitcomb Riley From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao Honey, Dripping from the Comb How slight a thing may set one's fancy drifting Upon the dead sea of the past A view, sometimes an odour, or a rooster lifting a far off and suddenly we find ourselves astray in some wood's pasture of the long ago or idly dream again upon a day of rest we used to know i bit an apple but a moment since a wilted apple that the worm had spurned yet hidden in the taste were happy hints of good old days returned and so my heart like some enraptured lute tinkles a tune so tender and complete god's blessing must be resting on the fruit so bitter yet so sweet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lying in the Grass by Edmund Goss From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Lying in the Grass between two golden tufts of summer grass i see the world through hot air as through glass and by my face sweet lights and colours pass before me dark against the fading sky i watch three mowers mowing as i lie with brawny arms they sweep in harmony brown english faces by the sun burnt red rich glowing colour on bare throat and head my heart would leap to watch them were i dead and in my strong young living as i lie i seem to move with them in harmony a fourth is mowing and that fourth am i the music of the scythe that glide and leap the young men whistling as their great arms sweep and all the perfume and sweet sense of sleep the weary butterflies that droop their wings the dreamy nightingale that hardly sings and all the lassitude of happy things are mingling with the warm and pulsing blood that gushes through my veins a languid flood and feeds my spirit as the sap a bud behind the mowers on the amber air a dark green beech wood rises still and fair a white path winding up it like a stair and see that girl with pitcher on her head and clean white apron on her gown of red her even song of love is but half said she waits the youngest mower now he goes her cheeks are redder than a wild blush rose they climb up where the deepest shadows close but though they pass and vanish i am there i watch his rough hands meet beneath her hair their broken speech sounds sweet to me like prayer and now the rosy children come to play and romp and struggle with the new mown hay their clear high voices sound from far away they know so little why the world is sad they dig themselves warm graves and yet are glad their muffled screams and laughter make me mad i long to go and play among them there unseen like wind to take them by the hair and gently make their rosy cheeks more fair the happy children 
full of frank surprise and sudden whims and innocent ecstasies what godhead sparkles from their liquid eyes no wonder round those urns of mingled clays that tuscan potters fashioned in old days and coloured like the torrid earth ablaze we find the little gods and loves portrayed through ancient forests wandering undismayed and fluting hymns of pleasure unafraid they knew as i do now what keen delight a strong man feels to watch the tender flight of little children playing in his sight what pure sweet pleasure and what sacred love come drifting down upon us from above in watching how their limbs and features move i do not hunger for a well-stored mind i only wish to live my life and find my heart in unison with all mankind my life is like the single dewy star that trembles on the horizon's primrose bar a microcosm where all things living are and if among the noiseless grasses death should come behind and take away my breath i should not rise as one who sorroweth for i should pass but all the world would be full of desire and young delight and glee and why should man be sad through loss of me the light is flying in the silver blue the young moon shines from her bright window through the mowers are all gone and i go too end of poem this recording is in the public domain my mother's bible by george pope morris from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox.org by craig franklin my mother's bible this book is all that's left me now tears will unbidden start with faltering lip and throbbing brow i press it to my heart for many generations past here is our family tree my mother's hands this bible clasp she dying gave it to me ah well do i remember those whose names these records bear who round the hearthstone used to close after the evening prayer and speak of what these pages said in tones my heart would thrill though they are with the silent dead here are they living still my father read this holy book to brothers sisters dear how calm was my poor mother's look who loved god's words to hear her angel face i see it yet what thronging memories come again that little group is met within the halls of home thou truest friend man ever knew thy constancy i've tried when all were false i found thee true my counsellor and guide the minds of earth no treasures give that could this volume buy in teaching me the way to live it taught me how to die end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the virgins by robert herrick from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia to the virgins gather ye rosebuds while ye may old time is still a-flying and this same flower that smiles to-day to-morrow will be dying the glorious lamp of heaven the sun the higher he's a-getting the sooner will his race be run and nearer he's to setting the age is best which is the first when youth and blood are warmer but being spent the worst and worst times still succeed the former then be not coy but use your time and while ye may go merry for having lost but once your prime you may forever tarry end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lauriger Horatius 
by anonymous translated from the medieval latin by john addington simmons from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter lauriger horatius laurel crowned horatius true how true thy saying swift as wind flies over us time devouring slaying where are oh those goblets full of wine honey-laden strifes and loves and bountiful lips of ruddy maiden grows the young grape tenderly and the maid is growing but the thirsty poets see years on him are snowing what's the use on hoary curls of the bays undying if we may not kiss the girls drink while time's a-flying End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old, Old Song by Charles Kingsley From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Old, Old Song when all the world is young, lad, and all the trees are green, and every goose a swan, lad, and every lass a queen, then hey for boot and horse, lad, and round the world away. Young blood must have its course, lad, and every dog its day. When all the world is old, lad, and all the trees are brown, and all the sport is stale, lad, and all the wheels run down, creep home and take your place there the spent and maimed among god grant you find one face there you loved when all was young end of poem this recording is in the public domain gaudiamus igitur by anonymous translated from the medieval latin by john addington simmons for the world's best poetry volume one Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Gaudiamus igitur. Let us live then and be glad while young lives before us. Let us live then and be glad while young lives before us. After youthful pastime had, after old age hard and sad earth will slumber over us earth will slumber over us where are they who in this world ere we kept were keeping where are they who in this world ere we kept were keeping go ye to the gods above go to hell in quiet thereof they are not there sleeping they are not there sleeping breathe is life and brevity briefly shall be ended breathe is life and brevity briefly shall be ended death comes like a whirlwind strong bears us with his blast along none shall be defended none shall be defended live this university men at learning nourish live this university men at learning nourish live each member of the same long live all that bear its name let them ever flourish let them ever flourish Flourish. live the commonwealth also and the man that guided live the commonwealth also and the man that guided live our town in strength and health found as patrons by whose wealth we are here provided we are here provided live all girls a health to you melting maids and beauteous 
live all girls a health to you melting maids and beauteous like the wives and women too gentle loving tender true good industrious duties good industrious duties perish cares that pule and pine perish envious blamers perish cares that pule and pine perish envious blamers die the devil thine and mine die the starch neck philistine scoffers and defamers scoffers and defamers end of poem this recording is in the public domain to theliarchus by horace translated from latin by sir stephen de vere from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia to theliarchus a spectral form soracti stands snow-crowned his shrouded pines beneath their burden bending not now his rifts descending leap the wild streams in icy fetters bound heap high the logs pour forth with lavish hand o thaliarchus draughts of long stored wine blood of the sabine vine to-day be ours the rest the gods command while storms lie quelled at their rebuke no more shall the old ash her shattered foliage shed the cypress bow her head the bursting billow whiten on the shore scan not the future count as gain each day that fortune gives thee and despise not boy or love or dance or joy of martial games ere yet thy locks be grey thine be the twilight vow from faltering tongue the joyous laugh that self-betraying guides to where the maiden hides the ring from finger half resisting rung end of poem this recording is in the public domain a knot of blue for the boys of yale by samuel minton peck from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao a knot of blue she hath no gems of lustre bright to sparkle in her hair no need hath she of borrowed light to make her beauty fair upon her shining locks afloat are daisies wet with dew and peeping from her lissom throat a little knot of blue a dainty knot of blue a ribbon blithe of hue it fills my dreams with sunny gleams that little knot of blue i met her down the shadowed lane beneath the apple tree the balmy blossoms fell like rain upon my love and me and what i said or what i did that morn i never knew but to my breast there came and hid a little knot of blue a little knot of blue a love knot strong and true twill hold my heart till life shall part that little knot of blue end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dolly by Samuel Minturn Peck from the World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 read for librivox.org by Jason in Panama Dolly she sports a witching gown with a ruffle up and down on the skirt she is gentle she is shy but there's mischief in her eye she's a flirt she displays a tiny glove and a dainty little love of a shoe and she wears her hat a tilt over bangs that never wilt in the dew tis rumoured chocolate creams are the fabrics of her dreams but enough i know beyond a doubt that she carries them about in her muff with her dimples and her curls she exasperates the girls past belief they hint that she's a cat and delightful things like that in their grief 
It is shocking, I declare. But what does Dolly care? When the bows come flocking to her feet like the bees around a sweet little rose. Samuel Minturn Peck. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beware by Ludwig Aki von Arnhem. Translated from the German by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1. Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Beware. I know a maiden fair to see. Take care. She can both false and friendly be. Beware. Beware. Trust her not she is fooling thee she has two eyes so soft and brown take care she gives a side glance and looks down beware beware trust her not she is fooling thee and she has hair of a golden hue take care and what she says it is not true beware beware trust her not she is fooling thee she has a bosom as white as snow take care she knows how much it is best to show beware beware trust her not she is fooling thee she gives thee a garland woven fair take care it is a fool's cap for thee to wear beware beware trust her not she is fooling thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain peg of limavadi by william makepeace thackeray from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin as the narrator lian yao as the laddie and jason in panama as the host peg of limavadi riding from coleraine famed for lovely kitty came a cockney bound unto derby city weary was his soul shivering and sad he bumped along the road leads to limavadi mountains stretched around gloomy was their tinting and the horse's hoofs made a dismal dinting wind upon the heath howling was and piping on the heath and bog black with many a sniping mid the bogs of black silver pools were flashing crows upon their sides ticking were and splashing cockney on the car closer falls his plady grumbling at the road leads to limavady through the crashing woods autumn brawled and blustered tossing round about leaves the hue of mustard yonder lay low foil which a storm was whipping covered with mist laken shores and shipping up and down the hill nothing could be bolder horse went with a roar bleeding on his shoulder where a horse is changed said i to the laddie driving on the box sir at limavady limavady's inn but a humble bait house where you may procure whisky and potatoes landlord at the door gives a smiling welcome to the shivering whites who to his hotel come landlady within sits and knits a stocking with a weary foot baby's cradle rocking to the chimney nook having found admittance there i watched a pup playing with two kittens playing round the fire which a blazing turf is roaring to the pot which bubbles with the murphys and the cradle babe fond the mother nursed it singing it a song as she twists the worsted up and down the stair two more young ones pass her twins were never seen dirtier nor fatter both have mottled legs both have snubby noses both have here the host kindly interposes sure you must be froze with the sleet and hail sir so will you have some punch or will you have some ale sir presently a maid enters with the liquor half a pint of ale frothing in a beaker gads i didn't know what my beaten heart meant 
he be self, I thought, entering the apartment. As she came, she smiled, and the smile bewitching, on my word of honour, lighted all the kitchen. With a courtesy neat, greeting the newcomer, lovely smiling peg offers me the rummer. But my trembling hand up the beaker tilted, and the glass of ale every drop I spilt it. Spilt it every drop. Dames who read my volumes, pardon such a word, are my what you call em's. Witnessing the sight of that dire disaster, out began to laugh, Mrs. Maid and Master. Such a merry peal. Especially Miss Peggs was, as the glass of ale trickling down my legs was, that the joyful sound of that mingling laughter echoed in my ears many a long day after. Such a silver peal in the meadows listening, you who've heard the bells ring into a christening, you who ever heard Cara Dory pretty, smiling like an angel, singing Giovanetti. Fancy Peggy's laugh, sweet and clear and cheerful, at my pantaloons with half a pint of beerful. When the laugh was done, Peg the pretty hussy moved about the room, wonderfully busy. Now she looks to see if the kettle keep hot, now she rubs the spoons, now she cleans the teapot, now she sets the cups, trimly and secure, now she scours a pot, and so it was I drew her. Thus it was I drew her, scouring of a kettle, faith her blushing cheeks reddened on the metal. Ah, but tis in vain that I try to sketch it, the pot perhaps is like, but Peggy's face is wretched. No, the best of lead and of Indian rubber never could depict that sweet kettle scrubber. See her as she moves, scarce the ground she touches, areas of fay graceful as a duchess. Bare her rounded arm, bare her little leggies, Vetries never showed ankles like to Peggy's. Braided is her hair, soft her look and modest, slim her little waist, comfortably bodiced. This I do declare, Happy is the laddie who the heart can share of Peg of Limavaddy. Married if she were. Blessed would be the daddy of the children fair of Peg of Limavaddy. Beauty is not rare in the land of Paddy. Fair beyond compare is Peg of Limavaddy. Citizen or square, Tory, Whig or Radical, would all desire Peg of Limavaddy. Had I home as fire, or that a sergeant taddy, Meetly I'd admire Peg of Limavaddy. Until I expire, or till I grow mad, I will sing unto my lyre, Peg of Limavaddy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Girl of All Periods by Coventry Patmore From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as the narrator, Craig Franklin as Ben, and Lian Yao as the damsel. The girl of all periods. And even our women, lastly grumbles Ben, leaving their nature, dress and talk like men. A damsel, as our train stops at five ashes, down to the station in a dog cart dashes. A footman buys a thicket. Sad clasp. Polly, and in the huge button coat and champagne charlie and such scant manhood else as use allows her her two shy knees bound in a single trouser with twixt her shapely lips a violet perched as a proxy for a cigarette she takes a window in our smoking carriage and scans us calmly scorning men and marriage ben frowns in silence older i know better than to read ladies have in a letter this aping man is crafty love's devising to make the woman's difference more surprising and as for feeling wroth at such rebelling who'd scold the child for now and then rebelling lures with i won't or for a moment straying in its sheer sure growth towards more full obeying yes she had read the legend of the ages and george sand too skipping the wicked pages and whilst we talked her protest firm and perky against mankind, I thought, grew lax and jerky, and at a compliment her mouth's compressure nipped in its birth a little laugh of pleasure. 
and smiles forbidden her lips as weakness horrid broke in grave lights from eyes and chin and forehead and as i pushed kind vantage against the scorner the two shy knees pressed shyer to the corner and ben began to talk with her the rather because he found out that he knew her father sir francis applegarth of fenicompton and danced once with his sister maud at brompton and then he stared until he quite confused her more pleased with her than i who but excused her and when she got out he with sheepish glances said he'd stop too and call on old sir francis end of poem this recording is in the public domain on a distant prospect of eton college by thomas gray from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by sonia on a distant prospect of eton college ye distant spires ye antique towers that crowned the watery glade where grateful science still adores her henry's holy shade and ye that from the stately brow of windsor's heights the expanse below of grove of lawn of mead survey whose turf whose shade whose flowers among wanders the hoary thames along his silvery winding way ah happy hills ah pleasing shade ah fields beloved in vain where once my careless childhood strayed a stranger yet to pain i feel the gales that from ye blow a momentary bliss bestow as waving fresh their gladsome wing my weary soul they seem to soothe and redolent of joy and youth to breathe a second spring say father thames for thou hast seen full many a sprightly race disporting on thy margin green the path of pleasure trace who foremost now delight to cleave with pliant arm thy glassy wave the captive linnet which enthrall what idle progeny succeed to chase the rolling circled speed or urge the flying ball while some on urgent business bent their murmuring labours ply gainst graver hours that bring constraint to sweeten liberty some bold adventurers disdain the limits of their little reign and unknown regions dare descry still as they run they look behind they hear a voice in every wind and snatch a fearful joy gay hope is theirs by fancy fed less pleasing when possessed the tear forgot as soon as shed the sunshine of the breast theirs buxom health of rosy hue wild wit invention ever new and lively cheer of vigour born the thoughtless day the easy night the spirits pure the slumbers light that fly the approach of morn alas regardless of their doom the little victims play no sense have they of ills to come nor care beyond to-day yet see how all around them wait the ministers of human fate and black misfortune's baleful train ah show them where in ambush stand to seize their prey the murderous band ah tell them they are men these shall the fury passions tear the vultures of the mind disdainful anger pallid fear and shame that skulks behind or pining love shall waste their youth or jealousy with rankling tooth that inly gnaws the secret heart and envy won and faded care grim visaged comfortless despair and sorrow's piercing dart ambition this shall tempt to rise then whirl the wretch from high to bitter scorn a sacrifice and grinning infancy the stings of falsehood those shall try and hard unkindness altered eye that mocks the tears it forced to flow and keen remorse with blood defiled and moody madness laughing wild amidst severest woe lo in the veil of years beneath a grisly troop are seen the painful family of death 
more hideous than their queen this wrecks the joints this fires the veins that every labouring sinew strains those in the deeper vitals rage lo poverty to fill the band that numbs the soul with icy hand and slow consuming age to each his sufferings all are men condemned alike to groan the tender for another's pain the unfeeling for his own yet ah why should they know their fate since sorrow never comes too late and happiness too swiftly flies thought would destroy their paradise no more where ignorance is bliss tis folly to be wise end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring song by bliss carmen from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by lian yao spring song make me over mother april when the sap begins to stir when thy flowery hand delivers all the mountain prisoned rivers and thy great heart beats and quivers to revive the days that were make me over mother april when the sap begins to stir take my dust and all my dreaming count my heartbeats one by one send them where the winters perish then some golden noon recherish and restore them in the sun flower and scent and dust and dreaming with their heartbeats every one set me in the urge and tide drift of the streaming hosts a-wing breast of scarlet throat of yellow raucous challenge wooings mellow every migrant is my fellow making northward with the spring loose me in the urge and tide drift of the streaming hosts a-wing shrilling pipe or fluting whistle in the valleys come again fife a frog and call a tree toad all my brothers five or three toed with their revel no more vetoed making music in the rain shrilling pipe or fluting whistle in the valleys come again make me of thy seed to-morrow when the sap begins to stir tawny lightfoot sleepy bruin bright-eyed in the orchard ruin now the good life goes askew in whiskey jack or tanager make me anything to-morrow when the sap begins to stir make me even how do i know like my friend the gargoyle there it may be the heart within him swells that doltish hand should pin him fixed for ever in mid-air make me even sport for swallows like the soaring gargoyle there give me the old clue to follow through the labyrinth of night clod of clay with heart of fire things that burrow and aspire with vanishing desire for the perishing delight only the old clue to follow through the labyrinth of night make me over mother april when the sap begins to stir fashion me from swamp or meadow garden plot or ferny shadow hyacinth or humble burr make me over mother april when the sap begins to stir let me hear the far low summons when the silver winds return rills that run and streams that stammer golden wing with his loud hammer icy brooks that brawl and clamour where the indian willows burn let me hearken to the calling when the silver winds return till recurring and recurring long since wandered and come back like a whim of greeds or gownards the same self bird bud or blue nose some day i may capture who knows just the one last joy i lack waking to the far new summons when the old spring winds come back for i have no choice of being when the sap begins to climb strong insistence sweet intrusion vasts and verges of illusion so i win to time's confusion the one perfect pearl of time joy and joy and joy for ever till the sap forgets to climb make me over in the morning from the rag-bag of the world scraps of dream and duds of daring home-brought stuff from far seafaring faded colours once so flowering shreds of banners long since fouled hues of ash and glints of glory in the rag-bag of the world let me taste the old immortal indolence of life once more not recalling nor foreseeing let the great slow joys of being well my heart through as of yore let me taste the old immortal indolence of life once more 
give me the old drink for rapture the delirium to drain all my fellows drank in plenty at the three score inns and twenty from the mountains to the main give me the old drink for rapture the delirium to drain only make me over april when the sap begins to stir make me man or make me woman make me oaf or ape or human cup of flour or cone of fur make me anything but neuter when the sap begins to stir end of poem this recording is in the public domain Youth and Love from Festus by Philip James Bailey From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Youth and Love from Festus Say, greybeards, what they please, the heart of age is like an emptied wine cup. Its life lies in a heel tap. How can age judge? Twere a waste of time to ask how they wasted theirs. But while the blood is bright, breath sweet, skin smooth, and limbs all made to minister delight, ere yet we have shed our locks like trees their leaves, and we stand staring bare into the air, he is a fool who is not for love and beauty. None but the brave and beautiful can love, oh give me to the young the fair the free the brave who would breast a rushing burning world which came between him and his heart's delight mad must i be and what's the world like mad for itself and i to myself am all things too if my heart thundered would the world rock well then let the mad world fight its shadow down soon there may be nor sun nor world nor shadow but thou my blood my bright red running soul rejoice thou like a river in thy rapids rejoice thou wilt never pale with age nor thin but in thy full dark beauty vein by vein serpentwise me encircling shalt to the end throb bubble sparkle laugh and leap along make merry heart while the holidays shall last better than daily dwine break sharp with life like a stag sunstruck top thy bounds and die oh it is great to feel that knot of earth hope love nor dread nor care for what's to come can check the royal lavishment of life but like a streamer strown upon the wind we fling our souls to fate and to the future. Philip James Bailey End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Joys of the Road by Bliss Carmen From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter the joys of the road to r h now the joys of the road are chiefly these a crimson touch on the hardwood trees a vagrant's morning wide and blue in early fall when the wind walks too a shadowy highway cool and brown alluring up and enticing down from rippled water to dappled swamp the outward eye the quiet will from purple glory to scarlet pomp and the striding heart from hill to hill the tempter apple over the fence the cobweb bloom on the yellow quince the palish asters along the wood a lyric touch of the solitude an open hand an easy shoe and a hope to make the day go through another to sleep with and a third to wake me up at the voice of a bird the resonant far listening morn and the hoarse whisper of the corn the crickets mourning their comrades lost in the night's retreat from the gathering frost or is it their slogan plaintive and shrill as they beat on their corslets valiant still a hunger fit for the kings of the sea and a loaf of bread for dickon and me 
a thirst like that of the thirsty sword and a jug of cider on the board an idle noon a bubbling spring the sea in the pine tops murmuring a scrap of gossip at the ferry a comrade neither glum nor merry asking nothing revealing naught but minting his words from a fund of thought a keeper of silence eloquent needy yet royally well content of the mettled breed yet a boring strife and full of the mellow juice of life a taster of wine with an eye for a maid never too bold and never afraid never heart whole never heart sick these are the things i worship in dick no fidget and no reformer just a calm observer of ought and must a lover of books but a reader of man no cynic and no charlatan who never defers and never demands but smiling takes the world in his hands seeing it good as when god first saw and gave it the weight of his will for law and oh the joy that is never won but follows and follows the journeying sun by marsh and tide by meadow and stream a will o the wind a light a dream delusion afar delight in year from morrow to morrow from year to year a jack-o'-lantern a fairy fire a dare a bliss and a desire the racy smell of the forest loam when the stealthy sad heart leaves go home o oh, leaves o oh, leaves i am one with you of the mould and the sun and the wind and the dew the broad gold wake of the afternoon the silent fleck of the cold new moon the sound of the hollow sea's release from stormy tumult to starry peace with only another league to wend and two brown arms at the journey's end these are the joys of the open road for him who travels without a load End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hope and Fear by Algernon Charles Swinburne From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Hope and Fear Beneath the shadow of dawn's aerial cope with eyes enkindled as the sun's own sphere hope from the front of youth in godlike cheer looks godward past the shades where blind men grope round the dark door that prayers nor dreams can ope and makes for joy the very darkness dear that gives her wide wings play nor dreams that fear at noon may rise and pierce the heart of hope then when the soul leaves off to dream and yearn may truth first purge her eyesight to discern what once being known leaves time no power to appall till youth at last ere yet youth be not learn the kind wise word that falls from years that fall hope thou not much and fear thou not at all algernon charles swinburne End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Heritage by James Russell Lowell From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Heritage The rich man's son inherits lands And piles of brick and stone and gold and he inherits soft white hands and tender flesh that fears the cold nor dares to wear a garment old a heritage it seems to me one scarce would wish to hold in fee the rich man's son inherits cares the bank may break the factory burn a breath may burst his bubble shares and soft white hands could scarcely earn a living that would serve his turn a heritage it seems to me one scarce would wish to hold in fee the rich man's son inherits once his stomach craves for dainty fare with sated heart he hears the pants of toiling hinds with brown arms bare 
and wearies in his easy chair a heritage it seems to me one scarce would wish to hold in fee what doth the poor man's son inherit stout muscles and a sinewy heart a hardy frame a hardier spirit king of two hands he does his part in every useful toil and art a heritage it seems to me a king might wish to hold in fee what doth the poor man's son inherit wishes overjoyed with humble things a rank adjudged by toil-worn merit content that from employment springs a heart that in his labour sings a heritage it seems to me a king might wish to hold in fee what doth the poor man's son inherit a patience learned of being poor courage if sorrow come to bear it a fellow feeling that is sure to make the outcast bless his door a heritage it seems to me a king might wish to hold in fee o rich man's son there is a toil that with all others level stands large charity doth never soil but only whiten soft white hands this is the best crop from thy lands a heritage it seems to me worth being rich to hold in fee o poor man's son scorn not thy state there is worse weariness than thine in merely being rich and great toil only gives the soul to shine and makes rest fragrant and benign a heritage it seems to me worth being poor to hold in fee both heirs to some six feet of sod are equal in the earth at last both children of the same dear god prove title to your heirship vast by record of a well-filled past a heritage it seems to me well worth a life to hold in fee end of poem this recording is in the public domain to youth by walter savage landor from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by sonia to youth where art thou gone light ankled youth with wing at either shoulder and smile that never left thy mouth until the hours grew colder then someone seemed to whisper near that thou and i must part i doubted it i felt no fear no weight upon the heart if aught befell it love was by and rolled it off again so if there ever was a sigh twas not a sigh of pain i may not call thee back but thou returnest when the hand of gentle sleep waves over my brow his poppy crested wand then smiling eyes bent over mine then lips once pressed invite but sleep hath given a silent sign and both alas take flight end of poem this recording is in the public domain my lost youth by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama my lost youth often i think of the beautiful town that is seated by the sea often in thought go up and down the pleasant streets of that dear old town and my youth comes back to me and a verse of a lapland song is haunting my memory still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts i can see the shadowy lines of its trees and catch in sudden gleams the sheen of the far surrounding seas and islands that were the hesperides of all my boyish dreams and the burden of that old song it murmurs and whispers still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts i remember the black wharves and the slips and the sea tides tossing free 
and spanish sailors with bearded lips and the beauty and mystery of the ships and the magic of the sea and the voice of that wayward song is singing and saying still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts i remember the bulwarks by the shore and the fort upon the hill the sunrise gun with its hollow roar the drum beat repeated o'er and o'er and the bugle wild and shrill and the music of that old song throbs in my memory still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts i remember the sea fight far away how it thundered o'er the tide and the dead captains as they lay in their graves o'erlooking the tranquil bay where they in battle died and the sound of that mournful song goes through me with a thrill a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts i can see the breezy dome of groves the shadows of deering's woods and the friendships old and the early loves come back with a sabbath sound as of doves in quiet neighborhoods and the verse of that sweet old song it flutters and murmurs still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts i remember the gleams and glooms that dart across the schoolboy's brain the song and the silence in the heart that in part are prophecies and in part are longings wild and vain and the voice of that fitful song sings on and is never still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts there are things of which i may not speak there are dreams that cannot die there are thoughts that make the strong heart weak and bring a pallor into the cheek and a mist before the eye and the words of that fatal song come over me like a chill a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts strange to me now are the forms i meet when i visit the dear old town but the native air is pure and sweet and the trees that o'ershadow each well-known street as they balance up and down are singing the beautiful song are sighing and whispering still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts and deering's woods are fresh and fair and with joy that is almost pain my heart goes back to wander there and among the dreams of the days that were i find my lost youth again and the strange and beautiful song the groves are repeating it still a boy's will is the wind's will and the thoughts of youth are long long thoughts henry wadsworth longfellow end of poem this recording is in the public domain youth from youth and age by samuel taylor coleridge from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter youth from youth and age verse a breeze mid blossoms straying where hope clung feeding like a bee both were mine life went a-maying with nature hope and posy when i was young when i was young ah woeful when ah for the change twixt now and then this breathing house not built with hands this body that does me grievous wrong o'er airy cliffs and glittering sands how lightly then it flashed along like those trim skiffs unknown of yore unwinding lakes and rivers wide that ask no aid of sail or oar that fear no spite of wind or tide not cared this body for wind or weather when youth and i lived in together end of poem this recording is in the public domain
the flight of youth by richard henry stoddard from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by sonia the flight of youth there are gains for all our losses there are balms for all our pain but when youth the dream departs it takes something from our hearts and it never comes again we are stronger and are better under manhood's sterner reign still we feel that something sweet followed youth with flying feet and will never come again something beautiful is vanished and we sigh for it in vain we behold it everywhere on the earth and in the air but it never comes again end of poem this recording is in the public domain ode to solitude by alexander pope from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by sonia ode to solitude happy the man whose wish and care a few paternal acres bound content to breathe his native air in his own ground whose herds with milk whose fields with bread whose flocks supply him with attire whose trees in summer yield him shade in winter fire blessed who can unconcernedly find hours days and years slide soft away in health of body peace of mind quiet by day sound sleep by night study and ease together mixed sweet recreation and innocence which most does please with meditation thus let me live unseen unknown thus unlamented let me die steal from the world and not a stone tell where i lie end of poem this recording is in the public domain home by leonidas translated from the greek by robert bland from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by thomas peter home cling to thy home if there the meanest shed yield thee a hearth and shelter for thy head and some poor plot with vegetables stored be all that heaven allots thee for thy board unsavory bread and herbs that scattered grow wild on the river brink or mountain brow yet e'en this cheerless mansion shall provide more hearts repose than all the world beside end of poem this recording is in the public domain the day is done by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox .org by lian yao the day is done the day is done and the darkness falls from the wings of night as a feather is wafted downward from an eagle in his flight i see the lights of the village gleam through the rain and the mist and a feeling of sadness comes o'er me that my soul cannot resist a feeling of sadness and longing that is not akin to pain and resembles sorrow only as the mist resembles the rain come read to me some poem some simple and heartfelt lay that shall soothe this restless feeling and banish the thoughts of day not from the grand old masters not from the bard sublime whose distant footsteps echo through the corridors of time for like strains of martial music their mighty thoughts suggest life's endless toil and endeavour and to-night i long for rest read from some humbler poet whose songs gushed from his heart as showers from the clouds of summer or tears from the eyelids start who through long days of labour and nights devoid of ease still heard in his soul the music of wonderful melodies such songs have power to quiet the restless pulse of care and come like the benediction that follows after prayer 
then read from the treasured volume the poem of thy choice and lend to the rhyme of the poet the beauty of thy voice and the night shall be filled with music and the cares that infest the day all fold their tents like the arabs and as silently steal away end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Happiest Heart by John Vance Cheney From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Happiest Heart Who drives the horses of the sun shall lord it but a day. Better the lowly deed were done and kept the humble way. The rust will find the sword of fame, the dust will hide the crown. Ay, none shall nail so high his name, time will not tear it down. The happiest heart that ever beat was in some quiet breast that found the common daylight sweet and left to heaven the rest. John Vance Cheney. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Out of the Old House Nancy by Will Carton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Out of the Old House Nancy Out of the Old House Nancy, moved up into the new All the hurry and worry is just as good as through Only a burden duty remains for you and I And that's to stand on the doorstep here and bid the old house good-bye what a shell we've lived in these nineteen or twenty years wonder it hasn't smashed in and tumbled about our ears wonder it's stuck together and answered till to-day but every individual log was put up here to stay things looked rather new though when this old house was built and things that blossom you would have made some woman wilt and every other day then as sure as day would break my neighbour eager came this way inviting me to shake and you for one of neighbours was sometimes blue and sad for wolves and bears and wild cats was the nearest ones you had but looking ahead to the clearing we worked with all our might until we was fairly out of the woods and things was going right look up there at our new house ain't it a thing to see tall and big and handsome and new as new can be all in apple pie order especially the shells and never a debt to say but what we own it all ourselves look at our old log house how little it now appears but it's never gone back on us for nineteen or twenty years and i won't go back on it now or go to poking fun there's such a thing as praising a thing for the good that it has done probably you remember how rich we was that night when we was fairly settled and had things snug and tight we feel as proud as you please nancy over our house as new but we felt as proud under this old roof and a good deal prouder too never a handsomer house was seen beneath the sun kitchen and parlour and bedroom we had em all in one and the fat old wooden clock that we bought when we came west was ticking away in the corner there and doing its level best trees was all around us a whispering cheering words loud was the squirrel chatter and the sweet song of birds and home grew sweeter and brighter our courage began to mount and things looked hearty and happy then and work appeared to count and here one night it happened when things was gone bad we fell in a deep old quarrel the first we ever had and when you give out and cried then i like a fool give in and then we agreed to rub all out and start the thing again here it was you remember we sat when the day was done and you was a making clothing that wasn't for either one and after the soft word of love i was soft enough to say and the wolves was howling in the woods not twenty rods away then our first-born baby a regular little joy though i fretted a little cause it wasn't a boy wasn't she a little flirt though with all her pouts and smiles 
why settlers came to see that show a half a dozen miles yonder said the cradle a homely homemade thing a many a night i rocked it providing you would sing a many a little squatter brought up with us to stay and so that cradle for many a year was never put away how they kept a coming so cunning and fat and small how they growed twas a wonder how we found room for em all but though the house was crowded it empty seemed that day when jenny lay by the fireplace there and moaned her life away and right in there the preacher with bible and hymn book stood twixt the dead and the living and hoped twould do us good and the little white wood coffin on the table there was set and now as i rub my eyes it seems as if i could see it yet then that fit of sickness it brought on you you know just by a thread you hung and you ain't a most let go and here is the spot i tumbled and gave the lord his due when the doctor said the fever turned and he could fetch you through yes a deal has happened to make this old house dear christenings funerals weddings what haven't we had here not a log in this building but its memories has got and not a nail in this old floor but touches a tender spot out of the old house nancy moved up into the new all the hurry and worry is just as good as through but i tell you a thing right here that i ain't ashamed to say there's precious things in this old house we never can take away here the old house will stand but not as it stood before winds will whistle through it and rains will flood the floor and over the earth once blazing the snowdrifts off will pile and the old thing will seem to be a morning all the while fare you well old house you naught that can feel or see but you seem like a human being a dear old friend to me and we never will have a bit of home if my opinion stands until we commence a keeping house in the house not made with hands end of poem this recording is in the public domain the homes of england by felicia Hemans, from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by lian yao the homes of england the stately homes of england how beautiful they stand amidst their tall ancestral trees o'er all the pleasant land the deer across the greensward bound through shade and sunny gleam and the swan glides past them with the sound of some rejoicing stream the merry homes of england around their hearths by night what gladsome looks of household love meet in the ruddy light there woman's voice flows forth in song or childish tale is told or lips move tunefully along some glorious page of old the blessed homes of england how softly on their bowers is laid the holy quietness that breathes from sabbath hours solemn yet sweet the church bells chime float through their woods at morn all other sounds in that still time of breeze and leaf are born the cottage homes of england by thousands on her plains they are smiling o'er the silvery bricks and round the hamlet fanes through glowing orchards forth they peep each from its nook of leaves and fearless there the lonely sleep as the bird beneath their eaves the free fair homes of england long long in hut and hall may hearts of native proof be reared to guard each hallowed wall and green forever be the groves and bright the flowery sod where first the child's glad spirit loves its country and its god end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old house by lady nairn from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter the old house oh the old house the old house what though the rooms where we all kind hearts were dwelling there and bare knees 
is for glee the wild rose and the jessamine still hang upon the wall how many cherished memories do they sweet flowers recall oh the old laird the old laird sick and kind and cross how many did he welcome to his ain we dear old house and the laddie to say gentle their shout to scotland said and clipped a lock where ain hand for his long yellow hair the mave is still doth sweetly sing the bluebell sweetly blaw the bonny yearns clear winding still but the old house is a wall the old house the old house deserted though ye be there ne'er can be a new house will seem so fair to me still flourishing the old pear tree the bairn is like to see and oh how often did they spear when ripe the hour would be the voice is sweet the wee bit feet i in and here and there the merry shout oh as we greet to think we'll hear nae mair for they are a white scattered now some to the indies gain and ain alas to her lang hain not here we'll meet again the kirkyard the kirkyard with flowers so every hue sheltered by the holly shade and the dark sombre you the setting sun the setting sun how glorious is gate do the cloudy splendor raised our hearts to cloudless skies a boon the old dial the old dial it told how time did pass the wintry winds he dung it do now hid mang weeds and grass end of poem this recording is in the public domain The House Beautiful by Robert Louis Stevenson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The House Beautiful A naked house, a naked moor, a shivering pool before the door, A garden bare of flowers and fruit, and poplars at the garden foot, Such is the place that I live in, bleak without, and bear within yet shall your ragged moors receive the incomparable pomp of eve and the cold glories of the dawn behind your shivering trees be drawn and when the wind from place to place doth the unmoored cloud galleons chase your garden blooms and gleams again with leaping sun and glancing rain here shall the wizard moon ascend the heavens in the crimson end of day's declining splendour here the army of the stars appear the neighbour hollows dry or wet 
spring shall with tender flowers be set and oft the morning muse see larks raising from the broomy lea and every fairy wheel and thread of cobweb dew did diamonded when daisies go shall winter time silver the simple grass with rhyme autumnal frosts enchant the pool and make the cart ruts beautiful and when snow bright the moor expands how shall your children clap their hands to make this earth our heritage a cheerful and a changeful page god's intricate and bright device of days and seasons doth suffice end of poem this recording is in the public domain if we knew or blessings of today by may riley smith from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin if we knew or blessings of today if we knew the woe and heartache that await us on the road if our lips could taste the wormwood if our backs could feel the load would we waste a day in wishing for a time that ne'er may be would we wait in such impatience for our ships to come from sea if we knew the baby fingers pressed against the window pane would be cold and stiff to-morrow never trouble us again would the bright eyes of our darling catch the frown upon our brow would the print of baby fingers vex us then as they do now ah those little ice-cold fingers how they point our memories back to the hasty words and actions strewn along the backward track how those little hands remind us as in snowy grace they lie not to scatter thorns but roses for the reaping by and by strange we never prize the music till the sweet-voiced birds have flown strange that we should slight the violets till the lovely flowers are gone strange that summer skies and sunshine never seem one half so fair as when winter's snowy pinions shake the white down in the air lips from which the seal of silence none but god can roll away never blossomed in such beauty as adorns the mouth to-day and sweet words that freight our memory with their beautiful perfume come to us in sweeter accents through the portals of the tomb let us gather up the sunbeams lying all around our path let us keep the wheat and roses casting out the thorns and chaff let us find our sweetest comfort in the blessings of to-day with a patient hand removing all the briars from the way end of poem this recording is in the public domain the soldier's dream by thomas campbell from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the soldier and sonia as his wife the soldier's dream our bugles sang truce for the night cloud had lowered and the sentinel stars set their watch in the sky and thousands had sunk on the ground overpowered the weary to sleep and the wounded to die when reposing that night on my pallet of straw by the wolf scaring faggot that guarded the slain at the dead of the night a sweet vision i saw and thrice ere the morning i dreamt it again methought from the battlefield's dreadful array far far i had roamed on a desolate track twas autumn and sunshine arose on the way to the home of my fathers that welcomed me back i flew to the peasant fields traversed so oft in life's morning march when my bosom was young and heard my own mountain goats bleeding aloft and knew the sweet strain that the corn reapers sung then pledged we the wine cup and fondly i swore from my home and my weeping friends never to part my little ones kissed me a thousand times o'er 
and my wife sobbed aloud in her fullness of heart stay stay with us rest thou art weary and worn and fain was their war-broken soldier to stay but sorrow returned with the dawning of morn and the voice in my dreaming ear melted away end of poem this recording is in the public domain the happy mother by alexander lang from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia as the mother and craig franklin as the father the happy mother and oh may i never live single again i wish i may never live single again i have a good man and a ham of my ain and oh may i never live single again i've twa bonny bairnies the fairest of all they cheer up my heart when their daddy's awa i've won at my foot and i've won at my knee and fondly they look and say mammy to me at gloaming their daddy comes in fra the plough the blink in his ee and a smile on his brow says how are ye lassie oh how are ye eh and how's the wee bodies since i get away he sings in the evening foot cheery and gay he tells of the toil and the news of the day the twa bonny lammies he tacks on his knee and blinks over the ingle full coothy to me oh happy's the father that's happy at hame and blithe is the mither that's blithe on the name the cares of the world they fear not to dree the world is naething to johnny and me though crosses will mingle with motherly cares awa bonny lassies awa with your fears gin ye get a laddie that's loving and fain ye'll wish ye may never live single again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tired Mothers by May Riley Smith From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Tired Mothers A little elbow leans upon your knee, Your tired knee that has so much to bear. A child's dear eyes are looking lovingly From underneath a thatch of tangled hair. Perhaps you do not heed the velvet touch of warm, moist fingers folding yours so tight. You do not prize this blessing overmuch. You almost are too tired to pray tonight. But it is blessedness. A year ago I did not see it as I do today. We are so dull and thankless, and too slow to catch the sunshine till it slips away. And now it seems surpassing strange to me that while i wore the badge of motherhood i did not kiss more often tenderly the little child that brought me only good and if some night when you sit down to rest you miss this elbow from your tired knee this restless curling head from off your breast this lisping tongue that chatters constantly if from your own the dimpled hands had slipped and ne'er would nestle in your palm again if the white feet into the grave had tripped, I could not blame you for your heartache then. I wonder so that mothers ever fret at little children clinging to their gown, or that the footprints when the days are wet are ever black enough to make them frown. If I could find a little muddy boot, or cap, or jacket on my chamber floor, if I could kiss a rosy, restless foot, and hear it patter in my house once more if i could mend a broken cart to-day to-morrow make a kite to reach the sky there is no woman in god's world could say she was more blissfully content than i but ah the dainty pillow next my own is never rumpled by a shining head my singing birdling from its nest is flown the little boy i used to kiss is dead may riley smith end of poem this recording is in the public domain